I'm so glad to be off that donkey. I know you are exhausted too. A little. Joseph, what is this? Where are you taking me? This is where we are staying. Here? It's, it's, it's dark and, and cold. And <laughs> but we have been in dark and cold places before. going away oh. for a little while. I will try to find us some provisions. Right. I will be back as soon as I can. Right. Uh, don't forget the lamp. Uh, and yeah. some extra blankets. And if possible, could you find something sweet to eat? It's for the baby. We made it. Can't believe we made it. <sighs> My God. Please let everything be all right. Everything feels all right. <sighs> it was such a hard journey and I just couldn't live with myself if something happened to him. We didn't want to come here to Bethlehem. We had to. Please, we've come this far. Continue to protect him and keep him healthy and be with us as we go through this journey and as he makes his way into this world soon. I'm so scared. I don't know if I can do this. Why did you pick me? Yes, yes, here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. I remember, and I still feel that way. But I don't know how to do this. Not without you. It's funny how I'm so scared to lose you now when I was so scared to have you at first. It was just a couple months ago when you sent your angel to inform me that I was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. The world wouldn't believe that. And I was unmarried and pregnant, facing the worst kind of shame imaginable and the stoning, which would have meant sure to death for me and for him and for the savior of the world. And I had absolutely no idea how I was going to get out of that. But I had just him. You sent me, among many other things, Joseph. 
your earthly father who was put in a very hard spot too, who was facing possibly terrible public shame and embarrassment himself, who could have chosen to oust us and punish us, instead chose to love us and protect us. I'm somewhat ashamed to admit to the both of you that, that I had and still have all these fears and doubts and evil overtaking my mind, even though you tell me not to be afraid. But I'm a mother. I worry. That's what the mothers do. I don't know if you know that, but it's true. I have nightmares about losing you. I know that will not happen because, <laughs> because the Lord, the Lord makes promises that he always keeps and you are the fulfillment of his biggest promise. So he made you overpower me so that Not only would my sinful nature and thoughts not be passed on to you, but also so that the bigger portion of my soul would find peace and understanding. That far away any fears I may have. So even though I still struggle and worry when I stop, become still and listen. I can hear his voice in my heart, in my bones, assuring me that nothing can happen to you that he does not permit. And he promises the same for us. Nothing can happen to us that God does not permit. He works everything together for his will, and he has graced me to be a part of that in spite of myself. It's shown me along the way that Mary, everything will be all right. Deep down inside, beneath the surface, I am not afraid to experience God's will in my life. That even the worst thing, his final will, cannot separate us from the love of God. Your existence has overshadowed all my fears. And anyone who comes to know you will feel the same. And when you find yourself in a dark, cold, and scary place, Remember, my son, to always look for the bright, warm light of God. Because it is always there. Even when you think you can't see it.
my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices for God my Savior for he has looked upon the humble estate of his servant for behold from now on all generations will call me blessed For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Ah. Uh. 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 Oh. Uh. Okay. Okay. Breathe. Um. For many times, a concept of word is better defined by the opposition. We better know what hot is by what cold is. We know what poverty is by knowing what wealth is. And we know what white is by knowing what black is. We live in a world of contrast where even the greatest emotions are best defined by opposites. We know what love is because we know what hate is. We live in this world of contrast because of the fall and sin, and we are in dire straits. One of the biggest contrasts that we have as people that walk in this world is the contrast of hope and fear. We hope something will happen. We fear it will not. I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, the woman playing Mary tonight is nine months pregnant. I hope that she wouldn't have the baby. I feared that she might. hope, and fear. It is one of those things that we struggle with in life, especially when we want to talk about the fear of the unknown. Where do we go? What do we do when we die? Some people struggle with that. Over the course of your life, maybe people have asked you questions of, am I going to go to heaven? What's going to happen to me when I die? I have great fear. Have you been at a deathbed where you've seen fear on people's faces? I have. They're very afraid. But fear is not an emotion that even Jesus does not know. He came into this world. His mother, as you heard this evening, had to have experienced many fears. Fears of humiliation, shame, fears of possibly stoning for being accused of adultery that was not true. Joseph probably experienced many fears as well as he took this woman to be his wife. And then when the baby's born, can you look at the life of Jesus Christ and say, he never experienced fear? Oh, yeah, he did. That's what the Garden of Gethsemane is all about, isn't it? He feared so much that the gospel writer St. Luke says, he sweat drops of blood. He knows our fears. And yet it's so fascinating, so fascinating, that carol that many of us love to sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem, how that author just puts it all together in that first verse. 
the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. And thee is Jesus. All the hopes we have for good eternal life are filled in Jesus Christ. All the fears of being condemned or worrying about the wrath of God are removed by Jesus Christ. In a single birth, the songwriter catches it well, does he not? All the hopes and all the fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. People question and wonder what will happen when they die. Christmas tells us we do not need to fear. You might be aware of a comic strip by Calvin and Hobbes, I mean called Calvin and Hobbes. It's about an adult living in the mind of a four-year-old child. And he's got this pet tiger called Hobbes, who is a stuffed tiger, but it comes to life in dialogue with Calvin. And Calvin and his tiger are sitting on a hill just thinking about life. Calvin asked the metaphysical question to his tiger, hmm, I wonder where we go when we die. <clears throat> a frame is there next where them thinking and meditating for the answer to the question, and the tiger has the answer. He says to Calvin, Pittsburgh. Then Calvin says, well, that's good, but now I need to know, do we go to Pittsburgh if we're good or if we're bad? Metaphysical questions are questions that even authors can make fun of, but in reality, they are hard pressing on every human being. But in this night, we are freed from any fear of death because we know that Jesus has taken away all our fears through his death and resurrection. We know that on our final deathbed, we don't need to fear anything. Instead, we will welcome the angels, and welcome the step to new life. I've always kind of find it phenomenal that when you watch a mother go through labor, the sh short burst of breath and the labor pains as she's giving birth to new life. And I find it fascinating that at the deathbed, I see the same thing, panting, burst. And I'm looking at that and saying, wow, here's another person of God being born into new life without fear. For because of Christmas, all the hopes and fears are met in Christ tonight. In his name, amen. Now the peace, the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We receive